What's up guys and welcome to the start of a brand new series here on the channel. This my friends is Firewatch. So this is a game I've had on my Steam wishlist for a very long time. It came out back in 2016. It's got fantastic reviews. It's got pretty much like a cult following. Like a lot of people really, really love it. And the thing is, it's short. It's like three to four hours in total, but it's supposed to be a really crazy ride. I, I think the idea is we are a fire lookout somewhere in Yellowstone National Park, and we're trying to figure out some sort of a mystery or a disappearance or something like that. It's going to be you, me, out in the middle of the lonely woods. It's going to be a great time. Hopefully you guys are ready for it, and uh, let's get after it. Here we go. We're going to start up a brand new game. I'm excited, man. I've, I've really been looking forward to playing this game, so hopefully it's pretty good. Campo Santo presents. In cooperation with Panic Inc. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s. Laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. Oh, Lord. You are drunk. <laughs> so what's, uh, what's, what's your major? Or you, you're pretty. Um, let's ask her about herself. You slur the word major and it smells like Coors. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. In the late 20s, that's pretty impressive. Uh, cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. Sniffs the air. Toxicology? <laughs> wow. Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriends. My man Henry knows how to make a first impression. Knows how to spit some game. So here we go. All right. We're in, in an elevator here. Pick up our backpack. Let's see what we've got going on. Looks like this is going to be our truck over here, I assume. You date for over a year? She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. That's how I feel about Chelsea. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia's in love and she wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. I'm definitely, I mean, we've, we've got Bucket the Beagle or Mayhem the Shepherd. I'm going to go with the Shepherd for sure. Mayhem's an excellent dog. He loves wrestling with you in the park and goes with Julia on her runs. Even though he's too big to bring to school, Julia loves him all the same. Mayhem is a friend, child, and pet all rolled into one. Sounds like our own dogs. Four years later, you talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Ooh. Kids, they're not very smart. We're good at much. I'm saying if you and I have a couple of little idiots, um, that'd be pretty good. Why not? In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you said. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. She's absolutely right. The thoroughfare trailhead. Do not forget to check in. No fireworks. Not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Got to look at our map here. Looks pretty impressive. Got a couple of different forks and stuff. Let's just um, let's head out here. I'm a little bit worried. It's just hikes. It's no big deal, dude. I I love hiking. I wish we had mountains in Florida. Uh, in 1980, it's a Thursday night. And Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Um, 
feel like getting mad is never the answer. If you really want to get under their skin, you ignore them. Pro tip for you guys out there and girls. Uh, you don't touch each other all night. The next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment, make some coffee, and go to work. Dude, are we going to see this relationship unfold? 1981, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plans from her research. She draws all the places you go, and she draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. 100% what I would do. Very nice. <laughs> Are these memories we're having when we're in the future? Uh, I've got a feeling we're, we've got a, a negative twist coming up here soon. The whole game is not like a, a text-based thing like we're currently working with. It's more of what we're seeing here. Two forks, fire lookout. Ooh. The sensitivity's a little bit weird. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking mayhem at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Mayhem runs away. May, me, move, uh, dog! Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. Scare him away or, I mean, beat his face. If you're gonna pull a knife on me, I'm gonna beat you up. Your arm gets cut, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julie asks you to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julie gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants you to move. You absolutely do not. I mean, I'm not gonna hold her back. Agree if she commutes back and forth. You'll ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't wanna move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees, flies back to Boulder three minutes, or three times each semester. This is sad, you should've moved to Connecticut, bro. You gotta support your, your person. Julia sent home from Yale and paid leave after having an episode. She lost on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. Say that maybe you guys should talk to somebody about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. I mean, this would probably be my go-to, but I think the answer is, is, you know, a therapist. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia at 41 years old. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Dude, this is, this is intense and, and really sad so far. We've got a journal here. Still wearing our wedding ring. Oh! Mayhem is getting older. He's got silver hair down his back and slows down at night. Dude, I'm gonna cry, stop. Just don't do the dog. We, we can break up, we can have dementia, whatever. Don't do the dog. You and Julia walk him to the bar to see your friends and it feels like nothing has changed. Julia goes back to the university. In 1987, Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought back home by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope, your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they're crushed and begin to make chips uh, to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. In 1988, you spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You decide to, to move her into a facility or you determine to take care of her by yourself. I mean, I. this is probably the best option, but I, 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 you made a commitment to this, this person. You know what I mean? You gotta see it through. Through thick and thin, sickness and health, that sort of thing. 
Now you're alone, you're miserable. Your dog has died. Your wife is gone. And you take these trolls through the woods. This is essentially what's happening, I think. Ooh. It's a big boy. How you doing? It's impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her. Like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. So we're developing a problem as well. You start going out after you put her to bed. First time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. Put a chair in front of the bedroom door or you trust that she sleeps like a rock. I'm gonna lock her ass in. Go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple of nights a week. You look forward to those nights. One night, you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point one and are taken to jail for the night. Consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. They tell you that Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Bro, this is depressing. I thought we were going to be like chilling in the woods. Try to save some, some people and stuff. Enter the lookout tower. I, I, I didn't think we were going to get this dude's whole depressing backstory. I feel bad for him, and it, it sucks because it's, I mean, partially in his control, but big part of it's not. Dementia, dude, that's so scary. Early onset dementia. Whew. All right. Turn on the tower. How do we turn this thing on? Is there a switch? There's a radio. Ah. Two Forks Tower. Got a radio here? Activate it. Hello? Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? <laughs> People take this job to get away from something. So what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then can I what, sleep forever? <laughs> sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Um, you killed three ex-husbands. You're rebelling against mom. Nobody back home can stand you. Okay, uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. <laughs> Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. I like her. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. But maybe you just really like trees. Maybe it's, gosh, maybe it's a borderline fetish, a tree fetish. Everyone Good loves night. a nice hard piece of wood. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. Firewatch. Dude, I, my heart hurts for this man. Henry, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Come sorry on, your Henry. life has come well, to this. I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Okay. How can you see me? That's a little bit creepy. Hey, sorry. Guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Whew. Yeah, Jesus. I guess it's, what, six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. 
But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Yep, this is it. Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne. Osborne. <laughs> Use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Which way is west? Are those fucking fireworks? Where's our compass? We've got our compass here. West is behind us. I, I need you to confirm. Do you see them? Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's it right there. Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. All right, don't you worry. Like, kick the shit out of him sort of straight? No, 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 no. Jesus, no. What? I'm not a cop. It's not like I've got a rule book over here. Just make sure they don't do it again. Take their shit. All right, fine. Don't feed anyone a knuckle sandwich. Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Okay, so, uh... Secure. Shut up. We've got to find that box. Are we going to be able to see that on our map? I hope so. I guess we'll see what happens. So we're just out here to, to enforce the, the laws of Yellowstone, baby. I don't want any gender reveal parties going on out here. Got to make sure we keep these, these forests nice and... Nice and safe. So this is box 306 right here. We're going to be able to open this with code 1, 2, 3, 4. Can copy the information on the map. So we're going to be able to kind of, you know, update our map as we go. We're going to be able to take this rope. It's also a pine cone in here, it looks like. And a granola bar. Oh. We don't want the pine cone. Get the pine cone out of there. We'll take the granola bar. All right. Um, eat it. Why not? Okay. We're just gonna follow the noise. Ideally, stay on the trail here. We don't really know exactly the lay of the land yet, so going off the trail might not be our best idea, but we'll see. It's beautiful out here. I love the mountains, man. Love them so much. Love being in Florida, the weather, the beaches, that kind of thing, but it, it'd be cool. I've always thought if I didn't live in Florida, I'd live in Colorado 100%. All right, so we're gonna go down this. It's steep. We're gonna attach a rope to the hook. This would be a cool job. Whew. Gonna be able to rappel down. Slow and steady wins the race. Yep. Slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. No, no, no! And it looks like we're not going back up that way. It's just so sad we still wear our wedding ring and stuff. Of course we do, but it's just a constant reminder. Report the climbing accident. Hey. What the hell's wrong with you? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. You didn't break it. There's another did one you? down here. No, I think I'll make it. Well, be careful for Christ's sake. So the fireworks were coming. I'm staring at the big outcropping down here, but I'm not quite I sure see where fire. to look for our uh, pyrotechnicians. Mm. Maybe keep heading west toward the lake. Looks like they've been drinking. They left half a bottle of whiskey. Decent stuff. Drunk pyromaniacs. Fucking great. <laughs> Gotta go ahead and... Oh, look. They decided to have a campfire, too. Stop you this know, out. they color-coded the fire danger signs in case people were illiterate. But I guess that doesn't take into account just plain stupid, does it? Can we stop this thing out? 
Beautiful. Got some backpacks so over here. Backpacks tied up here. Don't fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. We've got beer cans. What kind of beer are they drinking? Can examine it. Red Eagle. Brewed in Wyoming. You know what? Fuck it. I'm not the maid. Found the fireworks. They didn't even try to hide them. Uh, well, confiscate them. Okay, you want me to want me to pick these up? I'll uh confiscate them. Well, they left their clothes out to dry. They got naked. Like, uh, two people. Well, what if they're naked? Oh. Won't that be exciting? Look, they're obviously still there, so tell them off and then head back. I found a bra. A nudie pyromaniac. Remain professional. I love it. Let me. Can I examine this thing? It's not letting me examine it. Oh, I had to get closer. All right, we'll take it. We got a bra. We got panties. They're having a fantastic time. I can't wait to go see what's going on over here. It's two girls. Found them in the lake, naked. Skinny dipping. Yeah. Is that a guy over there? Oh boy. Enjoy dealing with that. What do they have? You gotta take it easy with the fireworks, alright? You ought to Those sparklers? Take it easy at the Sizzler buffet. <laughs> Chelsea? What? He's just some loser out in the woods. I mean, he's grody. Why do guys think it's alright to just stare at girls? Hey, just so you're aware, I confiscated your fireworks. Our fireworks? What? You did! Also, setting off fireworks out here isn't just stupid, it's illegal. Yeah, so is stealing, asshole. That's so fucking bogus. It's not how it works, girls. We're gonna pay for that. Can we just get out of here? Ew, totally. You're gross. You're just some sad man out in the woods. You know, they're not wrong. Let me go kick this boombox, bro. Hey, that go okay? It went fine. I, uh... Oh, wow. Um, the music's uh, a little loud. Oh, sorry. I took their stereo. Okay, well, uh, I guess we're all even then? <laughs> yeah, I think so. But seriously, though, thanks for dealing with it. Threw that thing right in the water, baby. All right, so we've got another trailhead here that we can we can follow. Gonna be a long way back home, baby. Here we go. Pretty successful first day, though. I mean, they, they obviously weren't very happy with us, but we did prevent a forest fire. Only we can prevent forest fires out here. So Gotta keep the, the patrons responsible. Make. Okay. What is it? Um... I was I was drunk last night when I welcomed you to the job. Yeah, well, you're not the first boss to be guilty of that. <laughs> I know. I just I know I can get a little pushy, you know, putting you on the spot about uh, why you're out here and stuff. It's no biggie. It's fine. I'll, I'll I'll keep that sort of a thing to uh to a minimum. Anyway, let me know when you get back to your lookout. You're in or out, right? Ooh. In route right now. That's a, uh, that's a storm. Hey, I heard some thunder. Yeah, I've got eyes on a storm out to the north. Well, that's bad, right? Because of the lightning? It just means we'll be busy. Hurry home and try not to get hit by lightning. I'm gonna give her our I full got life hit story. I got lightning when I was nine years old, so I'm safe. It's not gonna strike twice and all that. Well, there was an old lookout named Roy Sullivan who got hit by lightning seven times. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, well, if it makes you feel any better, it wasn't what killed him. What killed him? Suicide. Would you believe? Wow. Well, we found a cache, and as we know, everything is just one, two, three, four. Gonna be able to open these up, copy information about the maps, be able to pick up various items and stuff. Got a horn. 
There's a horn or an antler or whatever. Well, antlers are made of bone, and horns are made of the same stuff as your fingernails. I guess this is a bone. Antler. A ranger must have found it this spring. Do we need it? I don't think we need it. Got a flashlight. We've also got a cave. What's in this cave down here? In Thunder Canyon? Thunder Canyon? Hey, I didn't name it. But in the cave? I don't know, rocks? NFS tells people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. So... So, I say, fuck it. You're a grown man, you can go where you want. Great. Used to go caving with someone back in Colorado. She loved it. Might be great to explore it sometime this summer. Well, that could be fun. Obviously, be very careful. Bro, what the heck? This cave is gated off. It's to stop spelunkers from dying without getting the keys from the Forest Service office first. Makes sense. Although, Debbie says she lost them like three years ago, so... Maybe it's mysteries are locked away for good. Ah, damn. Yeah, but maybe you can find another one to get your caving kicks in. Oh, this one's so close to home and convenient, though. Aw, oh, sorry, Hank. I'm- I'm good, bro. Let's just- let's just keep, you know... Let's just go home, because there's a storm. I'm hearing all kinds of stuff. I can't see anything. I hope we're going the right way. This is- it's really beautiful during the daytime, but it is very scary at night. Got something over here. Uh, hey, I found a structure that might have been an outhouse once, I think. Whoa, uh, you don't need my permission to go to the bathroom, but, you know, use abandoned shitters at your own peril. We're going the wrong way. I, I got turned around. We're going the wrong way, 100%. We need to be going south. Backtracking here, backtracking here. We're going to want to go around this bend to the left and then and then continue kind of straight left-ish. So hold on a second. It actually, it, it looks... It looks like this cave is actually our... Oh, this is a step. Dude, we were going the complete wrong way. The cave, we did have to go in the cave. We just didn't have to actually go deep into it. Okay, I see you. My goodness, we were going the wrong direction. We were about to get into some trouble. What is that? What the f... Who do you think you are shining lights at people? Dude, this... Okay. It is... It is definitely gotten... Gotten creepier. I can... I can... Feel the... The... Intensity dialing up a bit. Got strange, mysterious men in the woods with flashlights. But he could be a hunter. Do they let you hunt in Yellowstone? I'm not sure. It's gonna be at the top of one of these things, isn't he? We're going the right way. Let's double check. Yes. Goodness gracious. I love that the game, I mean, you really have to think, you have to pay attention, you have to look at your map and your compass and stuff like that. It's not like, there's not an indicator showing you where to go. I love it when games do that. I love it when they really make you, make you try. Trail closed sign. I'm a little bit jumpy here. A little bit jumpy, no big deal. Got a generator. So this generator is all the power I've got out here. Yep, it doesn't go through much gas and, well, you don't have much in the way of electronics, so. Interesting. What about my hairdryer? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You might just have to make peace with frizzy locks. I could never. All right, well. We made it back home, thankfully. Dude, it would be really cool to sleep in something like this and- Oh. Someone broke in. Hey, what? They just- they wrecked the place. Threw my typewriter out the window. Motherfucker! Holy shit. Um, I'll let the Forest Service know what happened. The place is trashed. Bro, what the fudge? Did they leave a note or anything? Why would they do this? My fucking sheets are gone! Okay, I put in a call. Well, what can they do about it? Will they catch whoever did it? The 
This is the Forest Service, Henry. They're not exactly Hawaii Five-O. Do you have any idea who would have done this? I don't think it was the girls at the lake. Maybe that guy I saw in the canyon, but I don't know why the fuck he'd want to mess with my stuff. Well, I'll have the rangers keep an eye out for a man hiking on his own and question him if they find him. <sighs> I can't believe someone would do this. I worry about bears and fires, and that's about it. And now I've got to worry about some deranged hiker going after lookouts? Great. Uh, okay, in the morning I'm gonna call my friend Patty, who works the desk down in Cody. They keep a list of everyone who's officially been in and out of the trailhead since... I don't know, forever, and see if we can get a list of names. We won't get much, but at least if anything else happens, we can refer to it and see if anything comes up. This is so messed Thanks. up. I need you to feel safe out here. Well, I, I don't. Well, I sure don't now. You will. I, I promise.